Jerick McKinnon is what the Kansas City Chiefs thought Clyde Edwards Hilaire could be. McKinnon, 30 years old, on his second one year deal in Kansas City, rather than being a first round pick, has added a crucial element to the Chiefs' passing game. Kansas City's adjusted to the way defenses are playing them, becoming a more balanced attack, although it's still one that can hit the big play. I'm Matty F. Brown for the Underdog Fantasy Film Room. Let's get to the tape. I think we all started paying 2022 attention to McKinnon when he caught that nuts third and two Patrick Mahomes throw against Denver and ran it in for a 56 yard touchdown. This was the real beginning of the pair's chemistry on schedule and off schedule. Since that point, defenders have got real concerns about McKinnon's ability to slip out of the backfield and Mahomes has subsequently prospered on the ground instead. Check out this third and four from week 15 at the Texans, where the game was tied and Kansas City had less than two minutes left to play. McKinnon chip and released out of the backfield into the flats, checking on his quarterback. You can see the nearest defender converged on the running back out wide as Mahomes started to take off. This widened the available rushing lane, with Mahomes holding defenders with a feint to McKinnon in the flat before netting a 14-yard pickup. The Chiefs got down to Houston's 31-yard line. McKinnon also accented Mahomes' ability when the play breaks down in Week 16 versus the Seahawks. Needing three yards for a touchdown on third down, Mahomes left the pocket. McKinnon first started blocking for his quarterback before pivoting back to the inside. This gave Mahomes a potential passing option, but it also removed the defender from the outside front corner of the end zone. All of Seattle's coverage guys were kind of matched up because it was the goal line deal. Quarterback was still able to squeak into the front corner, extending Kansas City's lead to three touchdowns. Like how Mahomes has benefited from attention paid to McKinnon, the running back has gained opportunities thanks to the danger posed by the superb Travis Kelsey. McKinnon's touchdown against the Seahawks saw Kelsey shifted across the formation. Mahomes knew he had zone coverage thanks to this on the second and goal as the defense bumped rather than ran with it. Kansas City ran a simple snag concept into the short side of the field. Seattle, in a red zone cover three, had their curl flat safety run with Kelsey's corner route. As soon as Mahomes saw this depth, he fired to McKinnon's fast route out of the backfield, out leveraging defenders quickly. The running back adapted to the flight of the ball well, transitioning into a runner quickly. The deep third corner tried to spin back towards him, but McKinnon was able to power through this and the hook linebacker making his way across. Kansas City extended their lead to two touchdowns. You can see how the little spots or choice route in the snag concept acted as traffic for the hook linebacker trying to get outside to the throw into the flat. On this first and 10 against the Texans, trailing 7-0, McKinnon got wide open thanks to Kelsey, but also a lot of eye candy. The second level defenders nearest to the tight end looked to get underneath Kelsey's crossing route after the split action play fake. Meanwhile, the slide coming from one side of the formation with the orbit in the backfield got the defenders thinking the play was going to our left, but their right. This sucked the defender responsible in the cover three defense for the outside underneath space to the inside of the play. He was clearly anxious to help on what would have been a quick hitting play away from him. But while all of this is happening, McKinnon, who the ball was actually faked to initially, was left alone in the flat away from all of the action to the other side. Mahomes read from Kelsey to the alone McKinnon and the running back speed in the open field turned this play into a touchdown with a nice hop in at the end. Where snag works well against zone defense, crisscross running back releases work nicely against man to man. And the Chiefs love these in short yardage and goal line situations because they capitalize on the traffic in those condensed areas. Here on this third and two at the, at the Bengals, the defender tasked with playing man coverage versus McKinnon was massively out leveraged across the field, while all the other coverage guys were run the other way by Kansas City's root concept. This was an easy separation touchdown for Mahomes to hit, and the Chiefs then got the game within four points. And McKinnon almost killed a guy at the end as well, clearly letting out some frustration. 
What makes this McKinnon stuff exciting is that Andy Reid and Eric Bieniemy have grown even bolder with him out of the backfield, giving him funkier and what you could say more creative concepts. One thing they've done is played around with the way they run screens to McKinnon. This play with Kansas City down by three in Cincinnati on a second and 10 with less than five minutes to play, saw the back fake to his right as though part of the protection scheme before swiveling back for a screen catch. From there, he had enough wiggle to get behind his blocks and bring up third and short. This kind of disguised pivot screen caused the Broncos more issues. This game had got within one score and the Chiefs faced a second and 10. With Denver blitzing, the linebacker responsible for McKinnon stepped up with the pivot, thinking the back was part of the protection scheme to where Denver was bringing the pressure from. This linebacker probably thought he could add on to the pass rush or maybe just hold up McKinnon if he released that way. This was enough for McKinnon to lose this defender as he broke back to the other side and he caught the screening pass to that outside for big yardage, putting Kansas City inside Denver's 10 yard line. Honestly, this kind of execution is basically impossible to defend for the Broncos in this situation. The linebacker read it right at first and by the time he realized it was just too late. We've already seen messing with linebackers, but what was big about the Seattle game, the latest McKinnon excellence, was the Reed Bienemy boldness leading to a successful primary target for the running back down the field. It was a coverage beater that was easily open for Mahomes, and this is when the defenses that Kansas City is going to play are really going to be getting headaches. On the first and 10, the first drive of the game, the Chiefs shifted McKinnon strong, giving them four receiving threats to one side of the field and putting the running back to the same side as the tight end. This saw Seattle shift their front, placing the backside linebacker, the man responsible for McKinnon, over the center in an A gap. The Seahawks were running a too high defense that basically had them light in the box and the linebacker, the one responsible for McKinnon, was worried about the run fake inside. He then realized it was a play fake and saw that guard pulling with Mahomes rolling out to his left or right. And so he started trying to get underneath a potential crossing route from maybe a flood type combination. But instead, Mahomes was on a designed throwback play. While the linebacker did actually realize this, he was playing catch up, first coming down, then running back up, and then realizing the unusual play. McKinnon caught the pass for the first down and more. This is just messing with second level defenders because you wouldn't usually think that as a defender that the running back was coming back across the formation from this four strong look and especially not as the primary throwing option getting downfield. Usually it would be like a check down option off that kind of play action flood look. So what does this mean? Well, it seems like McKinnon is going to push the Kansas City Chiefs over the top to their second Super Bowl with Patrick Mahomes. This is going to be a problem for teams as the playoffs begin and Kansas City, before that, pushes for the number one seed in the AFC. Thanks for watching this Underdog Fantasy Film Room. Please do like the video and subscribe to our channel. If you want to talk football, please do comment down below. Until the next tape, this has been Matty F. Brown.